And this is what I came to understand about my workshop. Is that I've changed a lot of things and what I'm going to be talking about in the workshop because I want to introduce this. Because this is the difference between what this book is talking about for therapists. It's a linear thing. Do this, do this, do this, right. and your behavior you behavior change. Right. But there's no why, which is that dimension. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and not necessarily those of WKTV Community Media. Hello, West Michigan. This is Grand Tap Media Business TV. My name is Pamela Keim, your host. The spirit of the show is to introduce West Michigan to all the businesses, nonprofits, individuals that can help us thrive in our lives. Well, we have a good guest for you today. <laughs> and um, he has been on my show. He actually came in today and said it's been four years. And he is a professor at Central Michigan University, and he does workshops and, and he is a coach, a consultant, but he's the owner of White Raven Consulting. And he's going to be talking about this book, Motivational Interviewing to Help People Change. And he has some workshops coming up, and he's going to share a little bit about those and how you can come to those workshops to learn to help, I guess, people change. Yeah. <laughs> I want to welcome to the show Dr. Kai Sorensen today, uh, today. Thank you so much for coming into town to talk about this. Good to see you again. It's and been a long you, time. When you hand me this book, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and basically, you're going to have to share about that and what these workshops are about and who are you and what do you teach and how we can, many people want to help some people change in their life. Sure. But maybe, maybe they're going about it all wrong. And you're going to be talking about one thing that we confuse empathy with sympathy. Right. Feeling sorry for somebody. Yep. And we use it all wrong to motivate change. Right. So thank you for coming on to my You're show welcome. a little bit of You're day welcome. and talking about it. So look into the audience there and that camera. Who are you and what do you do? Exactly. <laughs> Did I explain that right? I think so. <laughs> uh, well, I teach part time for Central Michigan University, mostly graduate level classes. And for, well, I guess maybe the next, last 20 years or so, I've been searching for a way to express some of the things that I have learned over the years of working with students and working as a consultant and working in a, ver a variety of other aspects and businesses. And one of the things that I have come to understand about social workers, therapists, counselors, psychologists, etc., is that empathy is a very important part of working with someone who wants to change their behavior. So when somebody comes to a therapist or a social worker, sometimes they're volunteering to do that because they want some help. Sometimes they're assigned that, maybe because they're coming out of uh, some other issues that they had in their life, and so they were told to go to that. Um, but for the most part, therapists and counselors and psychologists are all attempting to help the, their clients come to a different perspective around their lives. And for the most part, what happens is they want to use empathy to try to do that. And for most of the people in our culture, they don't understand what empathy is. So you will ask somebody, what do you think empathy is? Do, what, what does empathy look like? And they'll tell you, well, standing in somebody else's shoes. Is that a you, right you can't You can't stand in somebody else's shoes. You can't. So you have to try to understand where the other person's coming from. Now typically, and I'm guessing this happens to you all the time, Pam, somebody will say something to you about, oh, well, even like your past guest. Right, you just met okay, her. we just met her. Yep. She's in a Mary wheelchair. Kay. She's written a Put book. In. She's doing a great number of things. And she was talking to us a little bit about what happens when people interact with her. And so here she is in a wheelchair and the person says something to her around, oh, I know what you mean, I understand what's going on with you, I feel the empathy for you, because my mom had to live in a wheelchair, okay? Well, I can bet you 100% that whatever her mom's experience in that wheelchair isn't the same as your past guest's experience in that wheelchair. But because they were in a wheelchair, you think, well, they have the same sort of interactions, they have the same sort of issues. And the same thing happens when people come to a therapist. 
And the therapist says something like, well, what did you do this weekend? How did we, the weekend go? And trying to find some information about that. Correct. And they'll say, oh, well, my husband and I had an argument and it didn't go very well and he slammed the doors and I had to walk out of the house and get my centered again. And the therapist might say, wow, you know, I understand what that, that's like because, you know, I've gone through that too. The therapist hasn't gone through that. The therapist may have gone through something like that, but it's not the same thing because this person's environment, this person's experience with those people in their lives isn't the same as your experience. But because they're telling you a story, here's probably what happens. You tell me a story, Pam. You tell me a story about something that, that uh, happened. Just make one up. What, something where there was an issue that you couldn't resolve very much. Just give me an example. Uh, well, uh, uh, the biggest one I come across is that, you know, being divorced okay. put me in an arena of divorce world, which I've never had. And, I, and I'm remarried. You know that already. Right. I'm very happy. Right. But I still get people, you know, they're looking at me when I was going through it, is that they, they thought they would understand sure. my reasoning and why I did it. They all were willing to give me advice. And, exactly. And I exactly. thought to myself, you don't even know what it's like for right. me. Right. Well, you know, I know exactly what you mean, Pam, because I've been divorced too. And let me tell you about my divorce. <laughs> now, see, exactly. now, this is what happens. People think that I'm empathizing with you because I'm saying, oh, yeah, I know what you mean because I've been divorced too. And so then I take the whole thing away from you and it becomes all about me. Why do we do that? Well, because we think we're empathizing and now we're going to share our experience so you'll know that I know how you felt. Well, you don't know how. I, I don't know how you felt. Your divorce was your divorce. My divorce was my divorce. Yeah. I went through this. You went through that. Just because we were both divorced doesn't mean we can understand what the other person went through. Right. For their reasoning and everything. And everybody tries to, I, I would say during that, when everybody thinks they're helping and, and sometimes you just move away from them. It's like, Well, yeah, really? because they're, they're taking it away from you. Yeah, it's no just... longer about you in your divorce. And so what a therapist has to do in that particular environment and motivational interviewing that's the first step in that process for therapists. All right, what it's, is that? Let's get to right to that. Empath okay. we, we, we talked on the phone and we talked about your upcoming workshops, but when people see this, they think empathy and motivational interviewing, it's like, here we go again. <laughs> you know, we gotta sit and listen to everyone's problems. We have to, I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. You know, it's like, ugh. That's all I do is listen, because you have HR people, and everybody has, everybody thinks they have to be heard for anything to get done. Sure. As long as we go around the room, everybody has an opinion. And so now you're going with, that's a little different than, can I work, because you work with companies and you work with therapists. I understand where therapy, where you get that. But let's just say, this is, like you said, come Pamela. I would love to learn just to be able to talk to people at a, a setting and not do what Mary Kay just said that people say you do. It's like, I'm not feeling sorry for you. I just, I don't know how to handle that. I don't know what mm -hmm. to say. I don't know what to say if somebody lost a child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something bad happened. You know, whatever well, the reasons. But that's why you would go to therapy. That's why you would find a social worker or a therapist or a psychologist who would help you with those issues in your life. And so that's what the motivational interviewing process is about. It's about a therapist using that technique to help you change a behavior. So as I think I mentioned to you to start with, the book itself. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, this is the third oh, edition. Oh my goodness. This is, the, this is the third edition. For any of the therapists or social workers out there, this is what they would use to start learning how to do motivational interviewing and help their clients. The challenge here is that this book was designed in the, in the whole process of motivational interviewing was designed to help alcoholics change their behavior of stopping drinking. And so that's really the premise of motivational interviewing for a therapist, is to help the person change their behavior, okay? By asking them questions? How well, does that work? Well, to start off with <laughs> empathy. So I wanna find out basically what it is why you're here, the therapist is saying. Yeah, really, Finding you're there out for a why, reason, right? why it is you're How here. Can I help you? Why have you come to me, right? <laughs> so it may have been a referral. They may decide they've, they've talked to a friend and the friend liked me as a therapist. So they said, well, call Dr. Kai. 
and he'll come and help you or whatever the case might be. But initially, what I want to do in that particular process is to try to understand why you came. Not what you're doing that you want to change, but why you came to want to change. And so that's the difference. What I see in empathy and the motivational interviewing process and what I'm going to be talking about in my workshops. Because I want the therapists and the counselors and the psychologists who come to the workshop to understand what empathy is really all about. And this is geared towards those fields Absolutely. of work. And then do you have to have like credentials to get in? Oh, no, no. But, but they're, going to, they're already familiar with this. That's Correct. why I'm using it. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm promoting the workshop to those therapists and counselors who are using motivational interviewing already because they're already in the process of trying to empathize with their client so they can help them change their behavior. But even, even um, I understand that that's geared towards that. Sure. But even people that are dealing with people with issues, I mean, there's something in that that you could Oh, sure. Could I could help. I, I would, well, that's what I'm hoping is that once the therapist come, or even a non-therapist, wants to learn a little bit more about how to understand what's going on in their family, I could do this with couples. Okay. Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing a workshop for couples, but I could work with a couple who was wanting to have better communication between each other and helping each one of them understand how to better communicate what their needs are. Because this is really the process of interviewing um, and what I'm gonna be doing in the workshop. We have to find out initially what's the need that a person has. Okay, so let's take alcoholics. Let's take anybody in a 12-step program. They're coming to look for some way to stop their behavior. Their yeah, it's destructive. Stop drink, it's drinking you or know, right. stop gambling or whatever the case yes. might be. Okay. Yes. So that's what I want to find out first. What, what is it that you want to change? Now, motivational interviewing is strictly aimed at getting you to change your behavior. But what I'm going to be talking about in the empathy workshop is not how I can get you to change your behavior. It's to start with how is it that your needs are not getting met. Because if your needs were getting met, you probably wouldn't be drinking. You wouldn't be gambling. This is a strategy that you're using to help you feel better about yourself. Coping. Coping, right. So that's the process that we'll, we will be working with as so we'll be able to say, okay, well, what's the behavior that you're wanting to change? But what I wanna do as the client is not try to figure out a way to get you to change, I want to figure out why you're behaving that way. Why is that your strategy? Because that strategy isn't working. If the strategy was working, you wouldn't be drinking. Correct. You wouldn't be gambling. Losing your family, your, right. your job. So there's, right. a, so there's a need that you have. You've come up with a strategy to try to cope with the need, and then you're going to act. And that's where you're acting out. But isn't, isn't the whole community, if you were to look at it, as you probably do when you go out in the world, Everybody's using something to cope with. Exactly. With something. They're trying to get their needs met. Right. I mean, yeah. with weight, uh, we deal with that. People that are unable to lose weight, and you can see right. that has what that has gone is a, it's coping, it's trying to soothe. Sure. Something that they don't want to face, or or they don't want to take the steps to change. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's why they would go to a therapist, Correct. so the therapist can help them. Right. So I like the process that motivational interviewing has here, but my complaint with it is it's aimed at just getting you to change your behavior. But my experience with 12-step groups and people who attend 12-step uh, groupings is that, okay, I can get you to stop drinking, so now you start smoking. <laughs> I can get you to stop smoking, so now you're going to go gambling right. because it's not getting your need met still. So if I take away how you're trying to get your need met by helping you stop drinking, you'll find something else because the strategy is if I can just take care of this, I'll be okay. And that's not what I want to help the, the therapists understand when they're working with their clients is we've got to get to understanding what the needs are, what the strategies are, and what their behaviors are. And once we do that, now we have a pretty good chance where I can start to help you from where you're coming from at a 
dimensional level, I guess, is the best way to say right. it. Right. Well, the, when you're looking at that book, and it's huge, and then be teaching the classes or whatever, you're, you're saying that there's, there's, there's a key part of that book, or you're adding sure. a key part of that book to help therapists get yeah. results. And, and here's another one. Basically. Here's motivational learning for social workers. And it gives you some exercises in here. It helps you talk a little bit about empathy. It helps you figure out some ways to do that. Uh, in your practice, and I would certainly be sharing some of those in the workshop as well, ones I think that would be productive for them. Um, but I did want to talk to this notion of dimension, okay? Okay. And it, this is kind of a breakthrough for me. This is what? This was a breakthrough for me this week, right before I came. Wow. Yeah, I had a breakthrough. Well, you're hearing it first on Grand Tap Media. <laughs> what, what is it? So um, what happened was, I was going to speak at the uh, uh, one of the gatherings that I speak to as an as a minister, okay. I'm a or, or ordained minister who as a non um, non denominational. And there's this group in Jackson that I go and speak with occasionally. Okay, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk to them about. And I had a book that uh, I wanted to talk with them about, the Untethered Soul, which is a really great book. I recommend it. Um, and I had some cards in a deck that came along with the book, and so I was just going to hand out the cards, and whatever card they got is the card they got, motivational, I mean, uh, law of attraction, right. and then we'd have a nice conversation. Sure. Well, I wasn't sure I still had the book, though, and so I looked at my bookcase, couldn't find it, I, I must have passed it on, or whatever the case might be. So I came across this book, The Empathy Factor, and I'd had this book for years. And I'd forgotten that I had this book altogether, even though this is what I'm going to be t talking about. Correct. Okay? This book, The Empathy Factor, is based upon nonviolent communication, which I think we probably talked about last time. And so I went, wow, Law of Attraction brought me to this book again. I should probably read it. <laughs> I should probably look at it. And so what I did was I started reading it, and there was an introduction from an internationally known speaker who was going around talking about business and how mm -hmm. to help people in their business lives and bring more empathy into the business. So not just personal, but institutional empathy. Okay. How can we, how can we motivate that within an organization? That's what he teaches. So he's talking in his book about one of the talks he was gonna make. At his, at his, uh, he was hired to come in and talk to a company. And so, the introducer, like you, said, well, what do you say you're going to be talking about today? So I can introduce him. And he said, well, I'm going to be talking about a book that I read called Flatland. Flatlanders. He said, what? Flatland? What's that? He said, well, it was a book written in 1884. And it's a book about Flatland. The world is Flatland. And so there's it's no third dimension. Book. There's no third dimension. Everybody in Flatland is either a square, a line, or a hexagon. There's no third dimension. It's just <coughs> flat. And as the story unfolds, a sphere finally comes to the square and says, there's a whole other world out there that's third dimensional. You need to come and see it. Well, the square can't absorb it. He just can't put it. To use, he, he's just, it's, and, and he, he just is blown, his mind is blown, he doesn't get it, okay? So he goes back to Flatland. And this is what I came to understand about my workshop. Is that I've changed a lot of things and what I'm gonna be talking about in the workshop because I wanna introduce this. Because this is the difference between what this book is talking about for therapists, it's a linear thing. Do this, do this, do this, right. and your you behavior will change. Right. But there's no why, which is that dimension. Why are they doing it? So I can get people through therapy to change their behavior. I can work with couples and say, well, here's a little, uh, here's a little um, communication thing that the two of you can do when you're having an issue. Okay. So let's say you and I are married. Okay. And. Um, uh, Every time I do the laundry, or help you with the laundry, I'm folding the towels, I'm folding the shirts, I'm folding it, everything, but I'm doing it wrong. You want me to do it a different way than I'm doing it. Exactly. Okay, 
And so I'm saying, I'm going to do it the way, if I'm going to help you, I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. And you say, no, you're not. You're going to do it this way. So now we have a problem. So I can teach you as a couple how to work through that problem so it won't be a problem anymore. Okay. See, that's really good because when you're living with somebody, you're so, they, right, they have that, little But that's linear, habits. but it's still linear. Right. It's still linear. I don't, I don't get into it unless you were wanting to come to me as a therapist and say, you know, I'm having this problem with my wife, my husband all the time, and we're in, we're, we're in that little process that you gave us, but I'm still having trouble with it. So now I would want to go to the third level with you and to say, well, you know, what's going on here with you around your relationship with your husband? Does it remind you of your dad? Does it remind you of a teacher you had? What was your feeling? It's triggering Are you projecting something. that onto dad? It's triggering. You know, and, and, the or whatever. Yeah. and the husband could respond as, look, I had a nagging mother. Sure, but, absolutely. You know, something gets triggered in us. Absolutely. And we were talking about that be before we started the interview process is about what you feel when you meet somebody. You know, you, you have to, there has to be a meaning to everything. And we just, you know, everybody's like, well, I don't care about it. Yeah, you do. You have a meaning for it. Like, I don't care. Right. Right. But there's a meaning that we, uh, what, put towards people and things. So when people walk in a room, we already have a feeling. And where does that go? And is it valid? Seven seconds. Right. It's, Seven yeah. seconds. Yeah. That's how it takes us. Is this. it valid? Maybe it yeah. reminds you of an old school teacher you couldn't stand. Right. right? We all have that. Uh, but that's why it's an important on that one. But this is basically helping, even for me, for the individuals, to know how to use empathy as opposed to the sorriness. And like you said, Mary Kay Hood Hood, who started Kids Food Basket, she totally get feels it when people do that to her. She goes, oh, they feel sorry for me, whatever. And she's done amazing things. Right. And I get that. And I was, when we were on the phone with the interview, um, going over the interview process, I said, I was trying to give you an example. I'm like, I do that all the time when you were saying, when, do I know the difference? Right. So then therapists might be doing the same thing, well, thinking. You serve an, as an example. I mean, she's, she says, you know, she feels this pity that people put on right. her because of how her, and so what I would do with her is I would say, let's work through this at that third dimensional level to the point where you can understand that Maybe they are feeling pity for you, but that's not about you. It's about them. Right. I, I would not, agree with that. And she's taking that on. See, and that's what I would work with her on. Yeah. So what, do you, what the workshop is on what? Share a little bit about that and sure. how many, you know, hours? It's three hours. Okay. It's three hours. It's uh, scheduled in Grand Rapids here on the 12th, Friday afternoon, 1 to 4 o'clock at the Central Michigan University offices up on East Beltline. Yeah, I know where North those are. North East Beltline, yeah. past the uh, Meyer Gardens. It's actually in the uh, the Kent ISD building. So as you can't miss it, it's on the west side of the um, of uh, the Beltline there. Uh, it'll be one to four. Uh, it's cost is $45. For therapists, uh, counselors, uh, social workers, it's $45 and they get three credits, three um, continuing education credits. Oh, through. wonderful. See that you'd be able exactly. to add that. Exactly. Because they have to do that every year, right? Yes, to keep well, up they, their have, they have three years. They have a, to collect three years? A, those uh, educational credits. And so it's a good, it's a good process. Uh, I'm working that on LinkedIn. If you have some, some folks out there who aren't uh, connected with me on LinkedIn and you'd like to get more information, just go to my page uh, on LinkedIn. There's a video there that talks a little bit about the workshop. It tells you a little bit of how to sign up for it. And, uh, or you can just contact me directly through this, through, through this presentation. He's today. basically a link, LinkedIn. You know, <laughs> that's how I communicate with him. And they're going to be like, it's a three hour, and it's on a Saturday, is it a Saturday? Friday, it's a Friday, Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. And Which is usually social workers and therapists don't have clients. Because the clients don't want to come Friday afternoon. They want to go I'm home. Going, I already yeah, exactly. feel bad. I don't need to do that. <laughs> exactly. But I would think that if you needed to learn anything is if you use empathy right, is what yeah. you're saying. You're going to be able to get more results from your clients, maybe even in relationships. And once you learn this, I wouldn't say it's a trick, but you understand how to communicate better. It's a process. Process right. that you'll be able to get more, maybe even out of your children and stuff. And I think that'd be great. I, I'm always looking for you yeah. know, communication Well, skills. this is interactive. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing that in the first hour, a little bit about what the process looks like. And then the last two hours, we're going to be doing the process. So they're actually be practicing this with each other. 
Right, you need to practice. And it's a wonderful set of exercises that I put together to help them get at this notion of empathy. You know, let's get deeper into what's going on for the person because every person's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I have a friend, uh, my girlfriend, and I like to go to dancing. She's a, she's a ballroom dancer, swing dancer. Uh, and we were at an event and she said, um, oh, by the way, one of the dancers is a therapist. I said, really? So I went, I went over and started talking to her a little bit about this. I, I didn't know her very well. So we had a real nice conversation. And she said, you know, maybe this would be good for me because I've got a client I've been working with for two or three years and we just can't get any more, you know, I can't help her get any more than what she's go going through. And so we're kind of stuck. And I was thinking, I'm sure this happens to a lot of therapists. I bet you And does. psychologists and, and counselors, that they have people who are maybe now addicted to the therapy. The friendship, yeah. too. And, you know? and I think this is a good process for therapists who go to therapists, because that's a really important thing for therapists, social workers, counselors, that they have somebody to talk to, because... Otherwise, they're just carrying all this around with their clients. Oh, that makes sense. And so yes. now they can sort of talk a little bit about what that feels like to them for another counselor and help them get some straight answers around uh, how can I change my behaviors? How can I open up more and help them, my clients? And so speaking to another professional is another way to do that. And that's usually what it is. And therapists have to know that. Sometimes you go and you're not willing to do the work. Exactly. And, you know, let's, let's get to the point where on these workshops to learn, maybe you can help in a social setting, maybe in a family situation, whatever, leading people. Oh, family situations, To yeah. get, <laughs> to improve your situation, to improve your home life, and maybe they don't even know you're doing it. Right. But learn, uh, because the best thing you can do is, is, is stronger families make stronger communities and workplaces, because they well, all trickle into each other. Well, sure, but one of the places where we get stuck is that somebody would ask me in a family reunion or a gathering with friends, uh, you know, I had some surgery on Tuesday. We talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. I had a, had a uh, melanoma on my wrist. And so I'm recovering from that now. So I might talk with somebody about that. And then they start to take it away from me about surgery they had or that melanoma or whatever Guess the what case might be. Guess what happened to me, you know? We and so I have that. to understand that that's yeah. still going to happen even though I know that they're trying to take this away from me. And so I still have to be patient with that, knowing that they're not really trying to one-up me, right. but this is just the way that they know how to do it. Exactly. That that's how they do it. They think that's sympathy, but Well, just not. talking to you on the phone, I'm, I'm trying to have more, <laughs> learn empathy the way it should be, um, you know, experience sure and showing that well and so that that'll be a little bit for me to have to i reflected on that i shared it with my husband he kind of just smiled i'm like i know <laughs> you know anyways but all right we're going to wrap this up so look in there one more time where they can reach you all you nurses counselors psychologists or maybe people that just want to learn how to communicate sure, better they can, they can reach me at uh, on linkedin uh dr kai Sorensen. uh you can reach me as a um, email and the email is www dr-kai.com that's my word website okay dr-kai.com that's my website and email you can reach me at drkai93 at gmail.com oh my goodness okay thank you very much and you can look me up on the web I'm well it's so wonderful to see you thank you for driving in and sharing your workshop thank you and i do believe that empathy is if you use it correctly you can really help change relationships in, yeah. in your workplace. So thank you very much, you Dr. Kai. Good to see you again. Right. Let's All do right. this again in less than four, four years. Right? Yeah, really. Well, well that's I'll see you in the workshop. You're going to come and <laughs> Exactly. I'm going to check that out because I love learning new yeah. communications. This is Pamela Kai from Grand Tet Media Business TV, and we will catch you next time. Take care, everyone.